last week we had the sermon of, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And Jesus went out and he calls his disciples. One of the interesting things about that that I thought would be interesting to continue that theme today is that he, he goes to the apostles now and to these, to these beginning apostles and, and Peter and, uh, and uh, John, Andrew, and they're fishermen. Now, maybe they own their own business, maybe they were working, but we believe that he says they left their father, so we think that they own their, their own business, all right? And so it's interesting that Jesus comes to them and says, you know, he, he talks to them, and he asks them and he says, throw down your nets. And Peter is the one who says, well, he says, you know, as I mentioned last week, you know, I've, I've done all of this and nothing has happened. But at your word, I'm going to let down the nets. So what ends up happening now? They all of a sudden get this great shoal of fish. They get all of these fish that come in and... It's interesting that the gospel does not say that Jesus helped them get the fish into the boat. It's, so I don't know. So uh, it doesn't say that. But they drag this huge shoal of fish, this great capture of fish, into the boat. And then he says, follow me. Now, I know I'm thinking about myself, you know, maybe, maybe not now, but I'm thinking of myself in the past. And if somebody came to me, and I had fished all night and got nothing, and I'm in the fishing business, and all of a sudden now, I get this great catch, and then they say, follow me, my response would probably be, no, this is the most successful day I've ever had. I'm gonna be making money today. So what I want is I want you to stick around and come with me when we go fishing, because you're my good luck charm now. Not trying to make Jesus Christ a good luck charm, but. So here it is, one of the lessons is, is that in the midst of their success, I mean, they're fishermen, this is what they're supposed to do. They catch all of these fish. The first thought would be, mm, you know, maybe we'll follow you later. Let us see how this is. If they let down their nets and nothing happened and they were unsuccessful and he says, follow me, then you think, okay, you know what? My business isn't doing that well. What have I got to lose? Let's follow this man and see where he goes. But this is not what happens. And sometimes this in our lives is what we are called to do. When we have, when, when we're besieged with suffering and when we're besieged with failures, whether in business or we've lost our home or we're going to lose our home and everything like that, it's easy now to say, you know what, let's, let's think of something else. Let's do something else. That's easy. Kind of in, uh, along the spirit of what was said today in today's gospel. The difficult thing, the difficult thing is that when you are in the midst of your success, to remember Jesus Christ. That's the more difficult part. So many times now we will pray and we will say, I'm starting a new business or, you know, I've just got this new job and I, and I want to move forward. God grant me this gift. And many times we, we get it. Sometimes maybe not in the way that we thought, but we receive this wealth, whether it's in the wealth of a home, a car, money, new job, whatever that is, and we receive this wealth. And then unfortunately, like the nine lepers that left, we forget many times to come back and say, ah, Lord, thank you for what you have done. Now, what do you want me to do with this newfound wealth? And that's where the Christian message is difficult because as we become more successful, more is expected from us. So in the midst of the success that the apostles had, they left everything they had, they left their father, and they followed him to some unknown future. They had no idea what this future was going to be, but they left this very successful day what could have been then much many in their minds maybe more successful days so let's keep this in mind that as we become successful 
And, and most, if not all of us, at some point will have this success, whether in a beautiful family, like I said, whether in a success in a business a venture that they do or where they're working, they'll get promotions and things like that. It is, it, it is important to remember what Jesus Christ said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's. And the meaning of that, which I was confused about, is that everything belongs to God. What you have received is through work that you have done, given to you by the grace of God. So it doesn't entirely belong to you. So in that success, what he then expects is that with equal measure, then we will give back. I know personally in my life that each time then that I have given back, I have received back then sevenfold. Not always in money and returns. I'm not trying to make this an investment thing. But I have received it back in gratification of knowing that I did what was expected of me as a Christian. It was difficult, but I did it. And then what returned to me then was the gift and the grace of the all Holy Spirit. And that I was then in that body of Jesus Christ, which is where we are all supposed to be as Christians. So that's kind of a secondary lesson of last week's gospel about in the midst of their success, they gave it up and now they give everything back to Jesus. And, and this is what now the Christian life is, that when we are suffering, we pray. And when we are successful, we also pray, but we also then give.